So in the primary key video, I showed you how we create primary keys, and we want primary keys to be able to uniquely identify rows in a table. And generally, if your primary key can be something intuitive, more intuitive than a number, then go for it. Uh, in most cases, it actually can be, but not in all cases. So once in a while, actually probably more often than not, you're going to throw an ID column with a identity value that will increment as your primary key. There's two reasons we do this. One, it's easy. And then two, anytime you have another table that references your table, if your primary key is long, for example, say somebody's name is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and we're using names as the primary key, well then every time we need to store information about that person, we have to use supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. For example, in our database, we could store uh, that they own vehicles. And if supercalifragilisticexpialidocious owns a lot of vehicles, I'm going to repeat supercalifragilisticexpialidocious for every vehicle that they own. So not ideal. That, could, that takes a lot of time processing overhead and a little bit of space overhead for sure. So more often than not, we'll just slam uh, int as our primary key and just go with that because they're simple and easy and good to understand. Here I have a cities table I'm creating and cities are in a state and they also have a name and I'm not I, I by no means do I know all the cities in the United States but I want to constrain that state code and name the combination of these two are unique so there could only be one Duckerville in, in a state. There could be multiple Duckervilles in the United States but each state can only have one Duckerville. So I could I could come down here and as a table constraint say primary key state code name. So now other tables that will reference our city table or cities table uh, need to do so via the state code and the name. But that forces the other tables to store two extra columns, state code and name. And state code could get long in the case of Duckerville. Or not state code. I mean, name could get long in the case of Duckerville. So we could have this be our primary key, but but uh, not ideal, probably. And this is, this is a religious thing that you have to decide if you want to do this or not. So let's just give this thing an ID. And um, say int identity. Uh, you can say 1, 1 here, as I showed in the identity video. But you can leave it off, and 1, 1 is assumed. And I'm going to say primary uh, key. Now, just to show you if I run this, I'm making this column a primary key, and I'm trying to make another primary key. If I run it, it says, hey, you can only have one one primary key, not multiple. Okay, But I still want my state code and my name to be unique. I only want one Duckerville per state. So the way we can get around that is still here at the table level, meaning I've defined all my columns, and now I'm down here defining more constraints. And I'm just going to say unique. So now this unique says, hey, it's not the primary key, but I still want the combination of these two columns um, to be unique. So if I let me try to insert into cities, values, um, let's see, I'm in Utah, and let's do Duckerville, that's a word, okay, whatever, and that works fine and dandy, select splat from cities, you can see that we have Duckerville in here. But if I try to say, hey, there's there's more than one Duckerville in Utah, it says, hey, violation of unique constraint. Ugly name. Cannot insert duplicate key uh, in object cities. That's interesting that it still calls it a key, even though it's not the... Uh, it, it's considered an alternate key, but it's not the primary key. It's an alternate key because it's still unique. It's a, it's a unique way of identifying the rows. So let's, let's go in here like I showed you before and... Uh, City, city, state, unique. Yeah, probably. I could probably come up with something better than that, but now I get a better name down here. Anyway, so so there we go. We've added this unique constraint that spans multiple columns. Now, think of what happens. Think of, think what happens if I just say, "Hey, unique here, and unique here." And I'd like you to pause the video and think: Is there really any difference between between saying unique up here and here? versus saying unique down here at the table level. So pause and think about it. You didn't pause. I told you to pause. Pause. Okay, good. So now you're back. Hopefully 
Hopefully you played with this and actually figured it out. But let me show you. If I say um, constraints, whatever, these two columns, the values of these two columns together must be unique. Whereas when I say unique up here, I'm saying, hey, this column, val this any values you put in the state code column must be unique. And any values you put in this name column must also be unique. So, which one's more restrictive, saying unique on the individual ones or saying unique across columns? Well, let's see here. I have a insert Duckerville. Let's let's do another Utah City. Uh, I believe Fillmore. We'll put Fillmore down there. Okay, so now I'm going to take these uniques off and just go with the state code and name. Notice we have a duplicate UT and UT, but the UT combined with the city name is unique. So this is unique from this because Duckerville and Fillmore aren't equal. So this runs just fine. But if I drop unique out here or up here, now I'm saying, hey, the columns and the values in this individual column must be unique. And the values in this individual column must be unique. Well Utah is equal to Utah, so that's gonna break the unique constraint. In fact, Having the unique up here basically makes this constraint superfluous because it's not nearly as restrictive as this one. So I'm just going to comment that out. Run it. See, we say, ah, violation of unique key constraint. Cannot insert duplicate key into cities. Anyway, so so that's how you do unique. Notice, again, if we're just doing it at the column level, like I showed you with the check constraint or the primary key, we just do it here on the individual columns. Otherwise, if we need to go a little more wider than just one column, we have to put the a unique constraint and parent parenthesize the column names after the definition or declaration, sorry, declaration of the last column. Anyway, so there's unique constraint.